Hi, everyone. Welcome to our weekly City Council recap. I'm joined this week by Sammy Fan, who is doing a bunch of great comms work with us this summer and soon will be heading back to the University of Santa Cruz for college, which we're sad about. But Sammy, it's been great working with you all summer. And uh, thanks for being willing to help record this council meeting recap. Thank you for having me. Go slugs. <laughs> yeah, but, go slugs. Uh, but today we're here to talk about yesterday's city council meeting. So let's dive right in. Definitely. Uh, so August 7th was an important day. It's when city council proclaimed August 7th as a Syrian national day of mourning. So could you let us know more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So yesterday at city council, at the beginning of the meeting, we have some ceremonial items and I was lucky to be able to bring forward a proclamation naming August 7th, as we do every year, National Day of Mourning for the Assyrian community, which is really just highlighting the unfortunately uh, large number of atrocities throughout, the, throughout history, I mean, over 2,000 years now, um, perpetrated against the Assyrian people. And, you know, we're really lucky in District 10 to have a large, vibrant, Assyrian community, and it's a community I got to know a little bit when I was running for council, and, and it's just, it's an amazing culture and history. Uh, but of course, you know, it's worth recognizing that the Assyrian community is here and spread really throughout the world in a diaspora because of the persecution they faced, uh, typically for their religion and culture. And so it just, it was an important moment for us to just recognize that history and, you know, recommit ourselves to peace and justice and coexistence and a, and a better world. And so it was, a, it was a privilege to be able to do that. I saw a lot of comments on social media that the Assyrian community was really touched by it in District 10. So I thought that was really important. That's great. Uh, yesterday, there was also an update on the Intergovernmental Relations Report. So could you please talk more about that update? Yeah, definitely. So this was a really interesting update. We heard from our, the folks who do governmental affairs for the city. So they are advocating and lobbying to Sacramento and to Washington DC typically for support for the city. And right now their work is more important than ever because we have a lot of fiscal stimulus funds flowing down from the federal and state government. And we wanna make sure that San Jose gets its fair share and that we're positioned to attract as many of those dollars as possible. And so just from the federal level, the American Rescue Plan will be ultimately sending over $200 million to San Jose. And I asked a couple of questions and basically just wanted to better understand from staff, which of these sources of funding are just formulaic, we're gonna get the money regardless based on population or some other metric versus competitive bids where we need to go out and actually aggressively compete for dollars and show that we're gonna spend them well. And it's really a mixture. And so some of the direction that we gave to staff yesterday was to return to council with more detail around the, the places where we may be eligible for competitive bids, where we wanna position ourselves to go get extra dollars to invest in things like broadband access or affordable housing or other, other needs in our community um, where we might be able to compete and get more dollars. So the conversation was interesting. Our team's doing a great job. A lot of that money is flowing. As folks probably know, we've been deploying funds for rental relief, uh, not as quickly as I would hope. I wish we'd gotten all that money out the door, but it is, it is slow, but we are slowly unwinding that, that debt bomb that is out there for many tenants. And we're gonna keep fighting to get those federal and state dollars and put them to good, good use here in our city. Definitely. And last thing for this recap, I know you wrote a memo on the housing crisis work plan. So could you talk more about what you wrote in that memo? Sure. And this really ended up being, in my view, the most substantive item that we discussed yesterday. And I think we spent over an hour discussing it. And I, I did write a memo. So the to, to back up, about three years ago, the mayor laid out a vision for building 25,000 new homes in San Jose to address our housing supply crisis. And the breakdown that was agreed upon was that we would try to build 15,000 market rate and 10,000 affordable. Now, when I say we would try to build, what I really mean is we would try to create the market conditions to get the investment and or the, the public funds to subsidize the affordable units um, to get those units built. And uh, the city itself does not actually build housing, but we sometimes for affordable uh, units, we subsidize them to ensure that they are rent restricted. And then for all those market rate ones, we need private investment. We need developers to go out and raise money and put together an uh, investment to then actually build that housing. So the city at the same time as, as we rolled out that big goal, 
put together a work plan to support it. And that work plan contains 43 different strategies for supporting housing production, we call it, building housing in the city of San Jose. And we got an update, it was a status report. And I, you know, I have to admit, it, it raised some red flags for me. We're, we're three years into the plan. We are, at, you know, we've delivered um, less than 4,000 new units in the first three of five years toward this goal of 25,000. So in terms of actual units built, we're a fraction of the need. Now, if you look at what's been permitted, what's been entitled, we are doing much better, but we're still not on track to reach the goal. Really, uh, when it comes to actual units built, we're not on track for market rate or affordable. And we've implemented, city staff has implemented about 15 of these strategies. And my view is when you have a list of 43 strategies, you're probably not being that strategic. And it's, that's not meant to be a knock on staff, but I think it's sort of a laundry list of just a lot of different ideas. And one thing I noticed is that that list of strategies doesn't include for each strategy a description of the expected impact, what we actually think will happen if we implement the strategy. And there aren't to it really any metrics so that we in advance can say, does this seem like the right strategy to prioritize right now? And then retrospectively look at how it went uh, when we implemented and say, did it actually perform as expected? And so to me, that's really, that's kind of the basics. That's something we would do in, in any you know, company or nonprofit that's deploying resources to reach um, strategic goals. And so I, I laid that out in a memo. We had a robust conversation. I'm happy to say the council did adopt my memo. I think it May have, may have gotten a little watered down, but the idea is to have staff come back when they give their next status update, give us an analysis of the performance of the 15 strategies that have already been implemented, and then also provide some metrics and an, and a, an explanation of expected impact for the remaining strategies, 28, I believe, that are left. And I want to have a conversation about, are these the right ones? Are they properly ranked? Are we sequencing them correctly? Are there any others that we should add to the list? Because we're, we're you know, a good portion of the way through this five-year goal and we're not on track. And we know we desperately need housing. I personally think we need to make much more aggressive moves to streamline the permitting process, to give investors more certainty, and to really double down on those urban villages and encourage private investment to flow into those urban villages near transit to build these mixed use walkable communities and build up. I, uh, not, to, not to go on too long, but I got a really interesting tour of a development in downtown. It's gonna be opening up uh, hopefully in the next few weeks or so. It's called the Miro Project, over 600 units. It's gonna overall house over a thousand people. And it's one building on not even one whole square block. It's just a, a, maybe a third of a square block. And it's gonna house a thousand people near where BART is gonna be soon, where we have bus lines, where you can walk to retail. And frankly, I think we ought to have 20 or 30 of those buildings going in downtown where it makes sense. So I'm really trying to push staff to think bigger and bolder about how we facilitate that kind of investment in our, in our city. So that was, that was the discussion. Does that, um, does that all make sense? That does make sense. Hearing about that housing just give me hope to know that all those, all those rooms will be available for families is really good to hear. I, yeah, and Sammy, I hope, you know, when you graduate from school that, you know, you're able to stay in San Jose and or come back and maybe one day buy a home here if you want. And, uh, you know, this is really for future generations. We've got it. We've got to build more, but we've also got to do it in a smart way. I definitely want to stay in San Jose. So fingers crossed. Good. We're gonna, let's do everything we can to make that happen. Awesome. Well, Sammy, thank you so much for joining me for the Council Recap. Really appreciate all the great work you've done on our comms team this summer. And uh, I think we'll probably have you on a few more of these before you head back to school, but just uh, really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who's watching at home and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.